Hello, I'm Paga Skiller, and what you're seeing here in front of you right now is literally the grandpa of all the circuit breakers, uh, the automatic circuit breakers. This thing is from 1978, or specifically, these were normalized in 1978. How old this specific switch is, unfortunately, I don't know, because it's not written anywhere on this. But if you have these at home, you definitely don't want to have... Uh, don't don't want to use this anymore. You want to upgrade from these to something better. You can see where it was made. It's from Czechoslovakia. Very old stuff. It's all Bakelite. I've already removed the screws. Before we take a look inside this one, let me show you what it looks like when it's complete. So it has these... It has these uh, installing pins uh, that allow you to put it into uh, into your breaker box. This one is a little dirtier. Made my pajamas dirty. Uh, this one is 10 amps uh, and it's V characteristic. Uh, this one is 6 amps and it's also V characteristic. And V and uh, those uh, letters actually mean something. There was V, J, and M. Uh, there are different speeds of these devices, slightly different characteristics each. So let me show you what it looks like on the inside. Ah, I, I managed to beat the camera a bit so that we know what it looks like in there. I hope I'm showing the whole thing. Anyway. Okay. And... Here is precisely one of the reasons why you wouldn't want this in your breaker box anymore. Uh, so I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain what some of these parts are. Hang on a second. I need to adjust my camera a little bit there. Yeah, it's uh, this is gonna be running problem. I I can't see most of my display. So I hope I'm displaying everything properly. But basically, ah yeah, if I touch the that's actually handy. If I touch the cover on my phone, then uh, then I know I'm I'm on the bottom of the screen. Okay, so let's focus this baby up, and here's what we have here. So this is the input right there that goes down here into this side of the contact. You can see that the whole device is now on the the lever is upwards because it, it belongs like this but i can't show it properly like on camera like this so the lever now goes up these two contacts are connected uh that thing i have moved here that is an arc extinguisher i'm gonna explain that later uh then there is the switching mechanism of this thing you can see that it doesn't hold very well in place because uh it's all out of alignment when there isn't the second half of the cover. Uh, right there, so the current goes through here into this piece of metal. That wraps up in here, goes through there, and onto this. This piece is bimetal, but that's not important right now because we didn't explain this little bit. This little bit, this metal bit, hooks up into this metal bit and i'm going to explain the function of that in a moment so the current goes here into this piece of bimetal and from this piece of bimetal keep focused camera it goes into this electromagnetic coil which by the way is i mean this is nauseating look at that they have they have so nice winding now suddenly they have three winds that are on top of that nauseating disgusting my ocd is burning uh i don't really have ocd but it's still nauseating uh and then from this electromagnet it goes into the into the output right there you can see there's this pink stuff all over the place that used to be a seal all right so that's just awful this pink stuff is a seal 
doesn't work anymore. Oh, it, it really wants to explode on me because it's all under tension right now. It's all online. Anyway, this thing, this bolt you can see here is pushing on this metal bit here. And with that, you're actually setting up the characteristic, the specific current for uh, this piece of biometal. So with this, you tell this thing when it should turn off. And uh, this thing turns off when you have too much current going through for a while. So the bimetal is the slow part. So if you have too much current going through for a while, this bimetal will push down on this piece of metal. And what will happen then, this piece of metal will get pushed and you can see that the device actuated because this piece of metal right there, this little bit right there, have hooked out of this piece of metal. So you can see this is a, this is a, this, this is just a, this, this is just a balanced piece of metal that is holding there. And it will also, by the way, you can see right now that this have pushed forward. And if everything is correctly aligned, this plastic piece that I'm holding here right now, this plastic piece, you can see eh, it's not very well visible. You can see how it's now protruding outwards. So that is your signalization that would tell you that this device was tripped by a malfunction. So how you turn it back into its position, and I'm going to try to hold everything down in a way so that it works. <clears throat> You push it all the way down, and you can see I have rehooked that piece of metal down there. I have rehooked the switch, and now this thing is out of focus. Uh, why does Android camera work like this? Is beyond is beyond my understanding. Uh, so now we're back in focus, and I'm going to try to turn it back on. And, you know, and by the way, you see, here's the contact right there, and it's now disconnected, all right? So it's all on the other side of the arc extinguisher, which is wrapping this, which is wrapping these contacts nicely. So now I'm going to try to re turn this device back, and you can see there that the function of this is not exactly the best when it's partially disassembled. And it wasn't the best when it wasn't partially disassembled. That's another reason why you don't want these anymore. They're very, very old, very rusty, very disgusting. By the way, this is paper, just to, just to be clear, all right? It's like the only plastic here is the Bakelite. They didn't know, or they didn't have access to different kind of plastic that they would be using for these devices specifically. So they've been using, it's 1978 kind of device. So everything is kind of 1978 about it. Is it 1978? 1978, yeah. Maybe earlier, I don't know. That's uh, 1978 is when the norm for these, where the norm for these things comes from. But I don't know, maybe there was an older version of the norm uh that i don't remember actually i don't remember 1978 but maybe there was an older version of the norm uh because these things are really genuinely very old so now it's back online is it it sort of is yeah you can see how poor connection this is so i have pushed on the metal uh, by the way, the same way it works, if there's a spike current, this electromagnet will pull on this piece of metal. And again, oh no, it's actually offline. You can see right there. I'm going to try to reactuate it without, without pulling. Oh, and I broke it. I broke it very much. I have broken it. No, no, I, it's not broken. It's just misaligned. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's kind of treacherous because uh, I don't have my glasses on and uh, I should have some sort of protective glasses, but every single glasses that I have are all scratched up so I couldn't see anything through them. So, bimetal overheats, actuates this. 
electromagnet, uh, too much current actuates this, all right? And that then actuates the rest of the device. Now, let me tell that, uh, let me tear that thing apart for you. By the way, just for comparison, before we tear it apart, there's a significantly newer device that was taken apart recently. Uh, and you can see how nice and beautiful this one is. This one would have been useful still if I didn't take it apart. But thing is, I'm not using uh, I'm not using old uh, circuit breakers. It's not safe. All right, so there you can see the modern version of an arc extinguisher. Okay, all is significantly smaller, finer, prettier. There's better surface coating on the metals. Uh, there is the part that gets actuated. That is the whole switch. All right, and there is the bimetal that you have seen in the other device. That's the bimetal. This one doesn't have that screw at the bottom like this one. This screw in this case is placed here and it's not accessible uh, from the outside of the device. Actually, it might be. Is it? Is it? Can't be. Oh, it is now because I have lost that piece of plastic that was closing it up. Oh, no, wait, I have put it in there. There, there it is. This piece of plastic is here. So hypothetically, you could access it if you make a hole into this. If, if you make a hole into this piece of plastic, uh, you can access this screw. But one thing that I can tell you, you do not do that. That screw is is the same thing. And by the way, this is the contact itself. All right. And this thing vents through these holes out here. So that's the same thing. Here's the electromagnet. You can see this is significantly prettier electromagnet. Here's the input. Here's the output. It's all it's all significantly prettier. I like these. I like these newer devices much better than these old ones. Uh, so let's let me take it apart for you so that you can actually see what is this thing all made of. So it should be. Yeah, it's in sort of. It's yeah. There we go. It's in some sort of intermediate state because this thing didn't want to really work before. So let me. One part will come out first. It surely will be that part that's going to shoot my eye out. Okay, so that's... That is the input contact. And you can see... It's all dirty up here. It still shines, sort of. If I... And I scrape it with my finger. It gets a little better, but this is all coated in silver, by the way. This is copper coated in silver, and this rust here, that is this zinced uh, horseshoe that is right there. By the way, order economy, would you have guessed that they have actually cut a square? It's not a horseshoe. It's a rectangular profile that they have cut and then they have pressed it in. And inside there's an insert that you're screwing your bolt into. So that is that is the marvels of order economy. This is all incredibly uncheap stuff. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just rock it to the side like this. You can also see that there's actually a separate piece of metal to keep the wire in place so that it doesn't get damaged by uh, by the screw. And then there is the actual contact piece where the wire is touching. You can even see where the wire was touching. That was aluminum wire. How do I know that? It's beautifully clean. There's no oxidation on that contact. Copper leaves oxidation. And of course the silver is pretty banged up. There is rust on this whole thing because this thing rusted. Yeah, definitely. If, if you find these in your house, get rid of them. Have them exchanged. It's not worth 
your life is worth more than a few bucks. So there, there we have the arc extinguisher. Paper box, literally. This is, this is literally, it's a kind of paper. I'm not sure what type of paper, but to me it looks just like a thick, hard cardboard. All right, so this is, it's basically a cardboard box with, and it's rusted, it's rusted in place. I can't, I can't remove the metal pieces, but here you can see this arc extinguisher might actually make things worse than better. All right, because it's all rusted up. So it will be basically uh, an arc will happen on this contact in between this and that. I can actually put it back in so that you see how it works. Eh, no, no, wait, I'm doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. Still doing it wrong. There we go. So there you can see how these two come together. They are already completely out of alignment. Hang on a second. Maybe, 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 maybe I'll manage to pull it once more. There. React to it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're back in place. So that's how it works. And now I'm going to try to just, there we go. That's what should happen. That's what should happen because I have removed this arc extinguisher. It works better now because it could be slightly out of alignment. So this is bust. This is garbage. So that is arc extinguisher, the input contact, all of the screwing and bolting for that. Then let's try to pull this out and see if we can disassemble it. So there's a spring in there. It's keeping everything in place. I want to see. Yeah, there is actually wire down here. Thank you, camera, for focusing. There is a wire down here. If I manage to find something to push this out with, I should be able. I should be able to just remove the insides. Okay, and you can see that I'm leaving the open end the other direction than you look because that's where the camera is, that's where I am. So, that's the Bakelite switch. You can more or less bet that I'm not going to be reassembling this once this is apart. Uh, there is the, there's that little hook. This is literally, literally one of the most important part of that switch. That's what keeps it on when it's supposed to be on. This bent piece of metal that's actually that's actually kind of interesting this is very thin piece of metal they're sending electricity through and of course the second part of the contact right there the spring that actually uh how this works is that the spring is pulled up through that wire that i have removed from that there, there we go on this wire it's actually pulling on that wire and what it does as it's sprung, this thing is just kind of standing there on a piece of metal. And if you move it slightly one direction, that spring will take it this direction. And if you put it over the half in the other direction, that spring will pull it back in the other direction. So that's essentially how this works. It's one of the simplest switches uh, that are pretty safe to operate actually. That's one of the simplest switches that you can build. Look, I can see how much full mess this shit is. Oh, blue. Okay, so what else can we pull out without destroying this thing completely? Actually, we're destroying this thing completely. Let me see. Let me see if I can... If I can remove this. So this looks like it's, uh, it's somehow solidly attached in there but a little prying should do the trick okay now we have the rest of the mechanism out so that's your output contact right here i'm gonna just loosen the bolt so that it doesn't stand in the way loosen this up 
Same stuff as before, slightly less rusty. Actually, it's not rusty at all. Oh, yeah, there is a little bit of rust, but not too much. You can tell which one is top because it's all rusty all the time because that's where the water goes. Again, we have, we have some paper here as an insulator. There's an electromagnet. I might be able to actually remove the coil. Uh, yeah, there is uh, another piece of schlemmer uh, falling out of this. There you have the actual screw that sets this up. Uh, I don't have good enough tools, I think, to actually do anything with this. Do I have, do I have something that I'll turn this with? I can try to turn it, but I very much seriously doubt that this will happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're turning it. So what this does, if I screw this deeper in, this bit of metal, all right, I'm going to try to simulate this. This bit of metal, oh, it's actually pretty hard. Bit of metal, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's why you should wear glasses and shit. Because it's, you never know what's going to happen. Anyway, oh, I managed to bend it. I win. Okay, so what happens is that if you screw that screw in, it will bend this bimetal downwards against this, and it will make it more sensitive. If you screw this out, hypothetically, this piece of metal that I have completely bent outwards should push this back in, and it will make it less sensitive. But since I have just seen what kind of material this is, I very much doubt that if you tighten this up all the way, I very much doubt that it will actually return back. So I think that's like one way ticket. Let's remove this. So that's this kind of assembly. And there you have a, there you have that top with the spring. That's the bimetal. I might keep the bimetal for something. And I think I'm keeping the electromagnet because that's a legit switch. All right. So again, this very thin piece of metal. I'm kind of, I'm kind of shocked by how thin everything is here. Uh, and there is, that, that's actually the output electrode right there. All right. And that's the, that's the bottom of the magnet. And I want to know if I'll manage to actually remove the magnet from this. Yes, I will. All I need to do is to figure out how to remove this bridge. And that might be hard as well as it might be pretty easy. And I think the key to that partially will be to remove the spring that's keeping the whole bridge up like that. And yeah, there we see it. The good old Czechoslovakian communist technology. Relatively easy to disassemble. And steel. That's why... That's why the capitalist uh, pigs have stolen our designs. Actually, we sold them right after the revolution. So, so the capitalist pigs didn't really have that much work with that. Uh, uh, yeah, but I see that that thing doesn't seem to be too excited about coming out. Ah, there we go. There we go. So that's the piece of metal that was holding it back in. And there's the electromagnet. Pretty awful winding, if you if you ask me. That's pretty awful winding. And for whatever reason, I thought this is the smaller screw that is that is bolted into some metal core, but it's actually just just a screw. That head is part of this order economy. You can waste as much as you want. Yeah, so that's actually a pretty nice wire. And, oh, by the way, piece of plastic. Look at that. This is a different plastic. This is not Bakelite. Right, so actually, if they had this kind of plastic, I don't know why would they use this 
Would you please focus? That is not focus. Try again. I don't know. Why would they use this as the outsides of this? They could have gone with new tech. I mean, they already have the better piece of plastic. Why did they go with paper? That is nonsensical. That is terrible nonsense what they've done there. So, so that's it. That's basically it. That's the insides. That was the insides of the IT. I think it was ITV. Oh, wait a second. We didn't disassemble it completely. So there is the... So there's the glass from the front. There's the there's the vintage paper sticker. Actually, it's not even a sticker, right? They didn't know how to put glue on paper. <laughs> they probably did, but they've gone they've gone with old tech to the last second. They've gone with old tech. So this is like forty years old thing, thirty years old thing, more than thirty years old. I'm thirty two. And after the revolution, these haven't been manufactured anymore. It would have been so nice if this camera would actually focus on something meaningful. Thank you, camera. And yeah, that's the same paper you have seen inside. That's this. But because it was outside, it's a little more bent. And there is some knob that... I don't know where it goes. And, of course, the pin that signalizes if the device have been shut down uh, by malfunction or not. And the spring that retracts it when everything is okay. All right, so that's it. That's all there is to it. So I'm gonna compare all of this junk, this rusty, horrible junk. You can see how horrible this is. All right, this is... All right, these are, by the way, this is like, I think this is like uh, 16 or 20 amps. How much is it? C16. So this is slow characteristic 16 amps. And you can see how fine everything is, how nice and small everything is. And that, that, that very fine arc extinguisher. And then six amps. Oh, look at me. I'm so fine. I'm so communist. Yeah, so disgusting. Uh, so obviously we've made strides in technology, but these are these are this is really the grandpa. Would you focus, please? What are you doing? What are you doing with your camera life? So this is what grandpas of technology look like it's this old horrible stuff it's it's basically the same thing just there's a lot more windings on this electromagnet than on this one because this one is this thing is significantly less sensitive mechanically so it has to have a lot more electromagnetic force to actuate it and yeah this is this is what you get oh my i have already broken it oh and the old piece of Communists have infected the have infected the youngster with with his propaganda. Uh, no, you get out, get out. More more capitalism. There there we go. There we go. I'm not even sure if I put it. Oh, it's same in both sides. By the way, I was criticizing the paper. And this looks like a pair of paper to me. <laughs> so it might be the right way to go. This looks like a version of paper to me in this brand. No, it's not brand new device. It's old, but this looks like a version of paper, modern version of paper. All right. So it's like non flammable something. Obviously, it must be non flammable. I have a suspicion that this one is very flammable. Let me see if I can burn it. Let me see if I can do it. <laughs> and... Oh, it's burning. Oh, I touched it. It's burning. It's actually on fire. It's not very visible, but it's still going. And it's going. 
and it's going some more. It's actually speeding up. There's more of a flame now. <laughs> this thing is very flammable. Just imagine this. Just imagine this going off and catching on fire inside your house. You wouldn't know a damn thing. Anyway, I'm running out of recording here. So that's me. Oh, there's a spider in my glove. Look at that. He was living inside that thing. No more. <laughs> anyway, that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Oh, it didn't want to. It didn't want to get extinguished. Wow. These things are radical. By the way, yeah, it's paper. It smells like paper. Anyway, now, finally, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Let me give you a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Okay, I thought I have extinguished this thing, extinguished this thing, and it's still going. It's still going. It's not burning specifically with flame, but it's still smoldering. That thing is close to reigniting. Actually, maybe, maybe now, maybe. Ah, yeah, it looks like finally. Finally, that thing kept going for like good three minutes after I have extinguished it. Wow. Yeah, so there, there you see, there you see why you should definitely update to newer technology. Bye-bye.